Hello, brethren. Praise the Lord again for this opportunity that uh, he has given us to interact with his word, for his word is life. And so let us pray. God, our heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity that you are giving us to interact with your word, for your word is life. And this day you call us to stand in the gap for other people because when you give us opportunity to serve, may we do it and do it well and so that your name will be glorified. Lord, enable us to read through your word and so that we shall be helped to continue in your service while we are still alive here in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I come this day with a message that has been on my heart. And this message talks about standing in the gap for others. And I have biblical portions that I'm going to share with you. And so that uh, you may pick a point or two to enable you move another inch while we're still here in this life, in this world. And so the portion of scripture that moved me is from uh, the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verses 1. And I will read a portion there and you'll get it as we go along. Matthew chapter 9 Remember, the section heading to that portion says Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic. But the point that I'm going to raise from there, and so Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once, some of the scribes said, Within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Hallelujah, brethren. This portion of scripture is the one that speaks and we shall unveil another text. But from this text, you discover that Jesus is doing his work, the work of salvation. Jesus is doing the work that brought him uh, on earth uh, because God loved us so much. And this is part of the love that we see that Jesus is exhibiting in this scenario. The Bible is saying that there was a man a man that had been sick and actually paralyzed that he could not walk. And we discover that this man could not carry himself to Jesus. This man could not walk and go to Jesus. But the Bible is telling us that there were some well-wishers. There were some people who saw that this man needed help. And the Bible says they carried him to Jesus Christ. And when Jesus saw their faith, and this is the point I'm driving at my brothers and sisters, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. Now the point here is Jesus looks at the faith of the men, or the people that came carrying the paralyzed man, and he tells the man, your sins are forgiven. He was paralyzed and therefore he could not carry himself. He could not move and go to where the Savior was. And so, brethren, when I read this portion, actually this week, I felt it deep within me that this speaks even in our generation today. Comparing our generation, our times, with the generation that was, you realize that um, there are people who may have who may wish others good, who may desire to help others. But our generation is, has gone so individualistic that some people 
will find, someone will find you in a trouble. Someone will see you in a problem. Someone will see you in a challenge, but may not come to your help. But the point here is the, this man, looking at this man and helping him, take him to Jesus. And because of the faith that they had, Jesus heals the man. And so, my brothers and sisters, it is challenging that these people do something, an act of mercy to the man. So, it appeals to me, it appeals to you, that may you have an act of mercy that you can do for someone. We, many of us, get incapacitated many times and in various ways. But our Lord Jesus Christ is showing us here that on account of the faith of this man, Jesus goes ahead and heals the man. And Jesus is still in his saving activity. Our Lord Jesus Christ is doing his work. Not that Jesus could not reach this man by himself. Not that his saving power could not reach this man. But this is one of the scenarios that happen. That one time Jesus can do can perform a miracle in your life, even in absentia. But at another time, Jesus could perform a miracle on account of other people's faith. And so believers, wherever you are, God has called you, God has positioned you to do something today, to do something for someone in this time, that like these people enabled the paralytic to reach the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, will you be able to take someone enable someone reach the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this portion has challenged me and has proven that we human beings can also participate. You can be a participant in the salvation of somebody. The preachers, you do it very well. You preach the gospel of Christ and you reach people. But also in our other ways, whoever you are, young or old, man or woman, Whoever you are, you can also be a participant. And so the point I'm making here is that you can be a participant in someone's salvation. Could be in the spiritual terms and you help someone arrive the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ by enabling that person to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. But also in other matters. By the way, this paralysis was physical. And so you can be someone who can help someone also attain the salvation in another area of life. Could be economic life, and you help someone to reach his or her destination. Can it be social life? Can it be emotional life? Can it be physical life? And so, brethren, God is calling us, and I emphasize you to be a participant in the salvation of another person. And before I go to another portion uh, that I'm going to read, let me refer you to somebody else in the Old Testament Bible. There is a man. This man is called Abraham. Actually, I was reading about him again in Genesis chapter 16, chapter 18, I mean. Genesis chapter 18. This man positions himself in such a way that God comes and reaches his tent. And the Bible says that Abraham seemed to have been expectant to receive the miracle-working God. I will not dwell so much on what happened in Abraham's house, but remember, it was during this time that he received the miracle of a child, Isaac. But the point I'm driving at at this time is his pleas for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And when you read, when you read there, you see the man pleads with God six times. He asks God, that supposing you go to Sodom and Gomorrah and you find there 50 righteous people, will you destroy the righteous alongside the wicked? So 50, 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. And so Abraham stands and does the work of pleading with God for other people's salvation. And I see the man, Abraham, pleading with God for the salvation of other people that were living in Sodom and Gomorrah. My brother, my sister, God is challenging me, is challenging you, that you stand in a gap for somebody today, that you plead, pray, 
And in any way else, may God enable you to help physically, economically, socially, emotionally, because we get challenged in very many other ways. And so my brothers and sisters, this is it, that our generation, especially during this COVID time, especially this, during this generation where we have so many predicaments in our life, we get challenged. People get challenged. There are those who get physically challenged, physically disabled. There are those who get economically challenged, economically disabled, socially challenged, socially I mean, dis, dis, I mean, dismayed. We are asked to do something. Like these people carried the man to Jesus, like Abraham pleaded, with God on behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Will you position yourself? Are you a husband? You can be a salvation point for your family. Are you a wife? You can be a salvation point for your family. Are you a child? And God can do something. And so as I end, let us get to the book of, I mean, the Paul is to the Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. And the Bible here makes mention of something very important. And because... Um, I, the, 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 the time is not on our side. Let me just read it. The Bible says, Bear and share the burdens. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Verse 2, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ here, Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is the law of Christ that Jesus is talking about. In this generation, we are supposed to be loving ourselves. Loving ourselves, yes, but love others as we love ourselves. And so verse 3, for if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have a rejoice, have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another for each one shall bear his own lord and so verse 6 says let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches verse 7 do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap that's a message there for those who sows for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now see verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. See verse 10. Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all. Hallelujah especially to those who are of the household of faith. If there is an opportunity, brother, if there is an opportunity, sister, do good to everyone. Do good. But of course, there are challenges in meeting our obligation. But may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sent him here to set us an example, we started from Matthew chapter 9, verse 1, when this man came carrying the paralytic and he healed the man, basing on their faith. And we see Abraham pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah. But of course, God could not raise the number that Abraham pleaded for. That is, the last number was 10. But he found their lot and his children and, and, and his wife. Of course, you know the story. But now here, Paul puts it very clearly in Galatians chapter 6, bear one another's burdens. Especially during this COVID time, especially during this tumultuous time. Our times are confused, but we pray that God will enable us to stand out. One of you, two of you, a hundred of you, a million of us can enable the world, Uganda, to be a better place, the world to be a better place. And so, my brothers and sisters, may God who called you into this salvation make you a point of salvation for somebody in your family, for somebody in your clan, for somebody in your nation. And so, May God, who has revealed this to us, enable you to do something. Stand in a gap for the salvation of somebody today in whichever form, and God will bless the work of your hands. If there's opportunity, do it while you're still here. 
and may God help me and may God help you to do our work in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>